Hi, my name is Nora Trades, and you're here at my mansion in Beverly Hills. I was the youngest kid on Wall Street, and I grew up on food stamps, but at the age of 18, I hit my first million. This is about 400,000 right now, and this yeah. is about 200. When do you wear an iced out watch like this? When I'm with the boys. What do you wear with the girls then? Nah, nah, <laughs> with the, I won't wear nothing. Are you single? No, I'm married to the money. So realistically, I have over 30 cars. A couple of armed robbers came into my house and I just woke up to four guns to my head. Thieves reportedly stole about a million dollars worth of jewelry. These were violent robbers. That's pretty bad. I think that was from the gun. What do you do for a living? I trade stocks and options for a living. And what's the most you've ever traded? 1.1 million. I'm a savage. I don't think there's anybody like me. My name is Aaron Van Campen, and I have created a survey in the description for anybody who's interested in being featured in a video like the one you're watching now. There you can let me know a little bit about yourself. I will fly out and we will make an awesome video together. Look, when you think you're at a certain level and you've made it, you just need to look higher. And then you look at those houses up there. Yeah, it's right? easy here. 30, 40 million dollars. $30 million, $20 million. Yeah. Look, at, look at that one right there, the White House. Yeah, that's wild. Everything is white. How do you keep the place so clean? There are maids that come every two days. So this room down here, I definitely want to change it up. Probably turn it into like another guest room. You can like come here, read a book, put some headphones on, yeah. get some sun. And the views are crazy. The stock market is a place where you can invest into stocks or companies. People usually invest into the long term. Now I do that obviously and I build my portfolio, but I'm also a day trader. I'm in and out throughout the day and I get out before the day ends. So this is the uh, master bedroom and probably the sickest views in the house. What I realized with LA and it's a glass everywhere, it makes it a lot more easier to wake up in the morning. Yeah, definitely the natural light. Yeah, I like to work <laughs> in the dark most of the time. Oh really? The biggest, biggest factor is patience. People feel like they have to trade. You can sit there, for example, today, I didn't see anything I liked and I just walked away 30 minutes into the market. What are some stocks that you like to invest in? Technology stocks, right? That can involve media stocks as well, like such as Netflix, mm -hmm. Disney, and all that good stuff, because they fall into the media technology wave. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, that's really all I trade. What's your all-time greatest book Suggestion. Principles by Ray Dalio. What is the book about? How he actually started his company, how he had to restart his company multiple times because he's failed multiple times. And it just showed you how discipline and consistency could get you further in life than you think. You can buy Noor's book suggestion using the link in the description. There you can also find all the gear that I use and software that I use to help run my business and create all this awesome content that you love to watch. You ever seen the hydraulics on this car? Yeah, it bounces? Yeah. How many cars do you have? Realistic Basically, I have over 30 cars. I own a rental company, but as far as personal cars, I have six. I never miss out on an opportunity to get in one of these things for the bounce. Sick, you gotta check this out. It's just so extra. The squeaking adds all the value. Yeah. If the squeak sound wasn't there, it wouldn't be as cool. I'm not gonna lie. Apparently, this is for getting out of sand or some shit, no? Yeah, I use it for something else. Yeah. <laughs> So excessive. All right, so this is the coolest part of the house. And I told you I own a Rolls Royce Phantom. And the Rolls Royce chairs, and bro. And the carpet, you feel how soft oh this is? Oh my God, that is hilarious, dude. Yeah, we're in here I've every night. I've never seen a Rolls Royce theater chair. Bro, this is one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about this the other day. Have no, you seen actually, this movie? Actually, this didn't come oh, with that okay, house. good, bro. My boy Joe actually got <laughs> all this. Yeah. How do you measure risk? It just comes down to what can I afford to, you know, lose, right? As far as your net worth growing over time, you can afford to risk taking, you know, investments into newer companies, you know, companies that don't show much potential, but you have the vision for it and it could be something very, very big in the future. So how much is like your average day trade amount? I would say around 60 to 80,000. And what's the most you've ever traded? In one trade? Yeah. 1.1 million. I'm a savage. I don't think there's anybody like me, personally. When did you make your first million? At the age of 18. How much money did you make last year? $5.4 million. Did you grow up wealthy? No, I actually grew up on food stamps. How old are you? Currently 23. Are you single? No, I'm married to the money. <laughs> okay, there it is. When did you make your first million? Right before I turned 18. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. And it was like you had a million dollars in your in your bank account. Yeah. I called the bank to to actually pull that money in cash. 
And the manager <laughs> of the bank was very close with my dad. Yeah. She ended up calling him and telling him that I was trying to take a million dollars in cash. I wanted to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I swear oh to God. God. The call that I got from my dad, oh my God, he ripped me to pieces that day. <laughs> this house was burning down right now. If you could only grab one thing, what would be the thing you would run and grab? My watches. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just take them on my way out. So RM1103 rose gold. Damn, bro. AP skeleton, full how, bust down. How much are these watches? This is about 400,000 right now. And this yeah. is about 200. When do you wear an iced out watch like this? When I'm with the boys. What do you wear with the girls then? Nah, nah. <laughs> the, I won't wear nothing. And this is a Bubba Watson Asian edition. That's crazy. What did your parents want you to do? They wanted me to become a doctor. Not a doctor, right? Not even close. What are your thoughts on woke culture? They're not woke. What's a stereotype about your industry that's true? Most of us are frauds. <laughs> <laughs> do you think TikTok is stealing our data? Definitely. Do I care? No. How do you feel about the increasing wage gap between the rich and poor? It has to be there. That's the only way the world goes around. You know, who's going to work at Target and who's going to work at Walmart if everybody's making the same amount? Of money. If you could switch careers and do anything in the world, money's not an object, what would you do? I'd be an FBI agent. Yeah. Nah, I get to shoot bad people. <laughs> bad people. You yeah, get to shoot I, bad people. I get to shoot bad people okay. and not get in trouble for it. I grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey, but right by New York. What was your first job? My first job was actually an internship on Wall Street when I was 16. Did your parents like push you to go to school and stuff like that or was it independent? Yeah, I mean, it's my culture. I'm Arab, so usually you're a lawyer or a doctor and yeah. you're forced upon when you're growing up. What made you choose the industry that you're in? Honestly, probably the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I think movie. I watched that movie when I was like 15 years old. Yeah. And I've just been attached to that since. Can you describe the turning point in your life if there was one? I feel like when I got to college, uh, that's when I finally turned 18. You know, I started making consistently two, three thousand dollars a day. And then from there, I just knew things were, were about to change. What happens now in my life, what you see in my life right now, isn't because what I'm doing now. It's because what I've done the last two, three, four, five, six years ago. Is this your only house or you have multiple places? No, I have multiple places. Where do you call home most often? Probably New York or Miami. So you have a house here, New York and Miami. Correct. How long have you had this place for? Ever since that home invasion happened uh, back in November. Yeah, no kidding. It happened around 3.30 this morning here in the Hollywood Hills. Police say as many as four robbers wearing masks broke in while the people inside were sleeping. And I just woke up to four guns to my head. Have you changed the way you do things after this has happened? Decided to get more security. That was the one night I didn't have security, which was kind of weird that that happened. Hence the why I said it was a setup. The robbers ransacked the house. Officials say they took jewelry and other items worth about $1 million and got away. If you, those people are watching the video, what, do you, what would you say to them right now? I mean, I just wish them the best. So do you fear failure? Do I fear failure? Yeah, I definitely do. I feel like that's why I work so hard. Like, I don't even want to know how that feels, how, how it looks. I can't go back to my early life type of thing. What's a fact about you that would surprise most people? I had the second highest SAT score in my high school that I'm very yeah. proud of. It was 1490 out of 1600. Do you invest in anything other than like obviously trading stock? Real estate. Yeah, yeah. Real yeah. Estate. Just the houses you own or do you buy like rental properties? No, I you? buy rental properties as well. I just travel the world for a living really have fun, talk to other people, connect with other people. Have you ever felt that people are just there to try to take advantage of you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of it. Attachments is what leads you to like a lot of negative aspects in your life. That's kind of one of the reasons why, like for example, when I have a kid, I don't want to have a pet in the house because you create that attachment. Same thing if you have a girlfriend. When you lose that person, it hits you hard. I feel like what motivated me when I was younger are the YouTubers. I used to see them just go on trips and just carry their phone and their cameras. And that's always been a motivation just to travel the world with a camera. And my friends out here, you just met them. They work for Stock Hours, my company, and they're camera people, right? And they get to come on these trips, enjoy life, and get to work. So I always find something for them to do. If you're looking to build networking connections, establish new partnerships, find new friendships, honestly consider joining my free community discord. The link to join is in the description. It's full of other like-minded people watching content like this and aspiring for greatness. Hi guys, so we're at 412 Motorsport. This is a spot where I like to come and take my work to. I'm a part investor into this company. Of course you're invested in something like this, bro. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be? This is the owner of DME, Tuning. Right nice to meet you, I'm Aaron. That's why the car is so loud. It's because yeah. of people like him. <laughs> you yeah. like making those cars loud. Yes, sir. Yeah. Which one of you is Renee? Right on, my name's Aaron. Renee. 
Damn, I should have thought uh, twice. Yeah. This is. It's, all fucking loyal. it's all good, bro. <laughs> Renee, why don't you show us around, bro? What is going on okay. in here? What, what is this thing? Sam's practice car. Practice car? Practice car. Oh, that's nice. I wish I had a practice car. I only got one car. I don't have any car, actually. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this guy good at tuning cars? I don't do the tuning. Oh, he just does the tours. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know enough about cars to tell you what the hell is under the hood here, but this thing is fire as hell. This is cool, dude. I'd love to be a part of a business like this. How much did you invest in here? Talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Can you tell me what software is that you use to trade stocks? So I use Thinkorswim, which is connected to TD Ameritrade. And then I use interactive brokers for my execution. Are you looking at like candlesticks and like making your verdict there? Or are you actually looking at like media and news relative to those stocks? So media and news plays a big factor with catalyst plays. And those come pretty rarely, but for the most part, I'm really looking at what has the most strength today or what has the most weakness compared to the overall general market. How do you rate that? So there's something called the S&P 500. And when that's trending higher for the day, that means the overall stock market is trending higher for the day. Now, if it's showing that it's down for the day, that means that the overall market is trending lower for the day. Now, if your stock is doing bad while the S&P 500 is actually gradually going higher today, that means your stock is showing some weakness. And I focus on that type of strength versus weakness against the whole overall market. So the way I see it is now that you've become a master at trading and you're proof of being a master at trading, sure. now other people can trust you with their money. And in order to do that, you need to set up a hedge fund. Tell me some like trading strategies that you use. The biggest problem with traders is they're trying to find that one indicator to tell them to buy or sell. If that was the real case, everybody would be a billionaire, right? There is nothing that's gonna literally sit there and say, buy here, sell here. People need to stay away from indicators and understanding how the market works, where liquidity is at, the volume profile of things, order flow, level two. People just don't wanna go the harder route. Where do you see your business and your trading in 10 years from now? I would say parting ways with personal trading. And actually I have a plan to open up my hedge fund the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Every year goes by, I look at it like I haven't really done much, right? And yeah, then I start noticing I that yeah. there's so many other things to do, so many other people that I meet and we come up with different business ideas, different projects, and it's almost like a stepping stone every single year. What is next on your bucket list? Something you've always wanted to do? Owning a private jet, probably on my birthday. Do you feel like you've achieved your childhood dreams? Definitely not yet. I feel like there's a lot left to do. You gotta, you gotta build an empire for that one. Any piece of wisdom or advice? I feel like what Aaron's doing actually provides probably the most value you guys can find on the internet. And I feel like you guys should take this as motivational, find your own craft and just be the best at it. Thank you so much for watching and big shout out to Nor Trades. I've linked his information in the description and you're gonna wanna go check out this video to see how a day in the life went with me, Krishan Rock and Blueface.